This is section 1.1, part C, histograms. Quantitative variables often take many values. A graph of the distribution is clear if nearby values are grouped together. The most common graph of distributions of one quantitative variable is called a histogram. A histogram is a diagram consisting of rectangles whose area is proportional to the frequency of the va variable and whose width is equal to the class interval. So when you're making a histogram, the first thing you need to do is divide the range of the data into classes of equal width. So if we have data values that go anywhere from the tens to the eighties place, you might want to break them down into tens. So you would have one bar that has a width of 10, the next one is another width of 10, but all those widths or the classes have to be the same size. You need to find the count, which is the frequency, or the percent, the relative frequency, of individuals in each class. You need to label and scale your axis and then draw your histogram. So what percent of your home state's residents were born outside the United States? The country as a whole has 12.5% foreign born residents, but the states vary from 1.2% in West Virginia to 27.2% in California. The table below presents the data for all 50 states. The individuals in this data set are the states. The variable is the percent of the state's residents who are foreign born. It is much easier to see from a graph than from a table how your state compares to the others. So to do this, we are going to make a histogram of this data. So the first thing we need to do is we need to divide the range of the data into classes of equal width. So we know that the data values are going to go from 1.2% to 27.2%. So let's go ahead and make our class width of 5. So that means from 0, anything up to 5. So 0 all the way up to 4.999. And then from 5 all the way up till just you get to 10, 10 all the way up to 5, almost 15, 15 to almost 20, 20 to almost 25, and then 25 up to 30 would be our different classes. You would then go through and you would count the frequency that this occurs. So in this table, there are 20 times that a data value is between 0 and 5. There's 13 times it's 5 up to 10, 9 times from 10 up to 15, 15 from 15 up to 20, we have 5 times, and so on and so forth. If you wanted to make this into a percent, you would take this 20, 20 times out of 50, or 40% 40 of the time, the value is from 0 up to 5, 13 out of 50, would give us the 26%. So you can do this as a count or you can do this as a percent. Then you would need to label and scale your axis. So if we use the count, the one on the left, um, we're still looking at the percent of foreign born residents. Each bar, remember, has a width of five. So we're going from zero to five, five to 10, 10 to 15. Then we are also going to have a vertical axis. And this time on the graph on the left is telling us the number of states. The graph on the right is telling us the percent of the states. Now when you make a histogram, you need to make the bar go the full width of your class. So our first class goes from zero over to just before five. So the bar goes that entire width. On a histogram, the bars touch as long as there is not a class that does not have any data values. When do the histograms below, what do the histograms below tell us about the percent of foreign born residents in the states? To find out, we follow our familiar routine. You're still gonna discuss the pattern and any departures from that pattern. So if we look at the shape first, the shape of the distribution is definitely skewed to the right. A majority of states have fewer than 10% foreign born residents, but several states have much higher percents. So the graph exceeds quite far, extends quite far to the right of its peak. The distribution is single peaked at the left, which presents states that are between zero and 4.9% of the residents are foreign born. If we look at the center, 
From the graph, we see that the midpoint, which we're going to call the median in this case, would fall within this bar somewhere. So we can't say exactly where that would be located. Now there are 50 states. How did we find the middle? If there are 50 states, the middle would be between the 25th and 26th state. Now we can look at the count here and see that we have 20 states that fall on this bar, and this bar goes up past 10. So if we need to get to 26, it would definitely be somewhere in this bar. So when you're reading a histogram, if you're finding the median, you will just say in which class it is located. So the median would be located in the class from 5.0% to 9.9%. Remember that we are looking at all 20, the middle of the 25, so the middle 25. If we look at the spread, the histogram shows that the percent of foreign-born residents in the states vary from 5% so less than 5% to over 25%. So you cannot actually give an exact spread or exact range if you're only looking at the histogram. If we do look at the data on the table, we can see that the range goes from 27.2 to 1.2, which is a 26% range. If we're looking for any outliers, there are no any gaps in our histogram, so we don't see any observations outside the normal pattern, so it does not appear that there are any outliers. The below histograms show a frequency histogram and a relative frequency histogram. So a frequency histogram just tells you how frequently something happens, that's when you do a count, and a relative frequency histogram tells you the percent that it is occurring of the same distribution, where classes are half as wide. So this time we're looking to go from zero to less than 2.5 and 2.5 less than 5. So we're taking those classes, we're cutting them in half. Now we can see that there is a potential outlier. So by making your classes smaller, it may be easier to see the shape of your distribution and to determine if there's any possible outliers. So now it does look like that California could be a potential outlier on that right tail. Now, you can make histograms on a graphing calculator. If you have a TI-83 or an 84, to do this, you would enter the data into your list editor. So to do this, you would press the stat button. You would choose option one, which says edit. And then when it pops up to list one, you would type all your data values into list one. To set up a histogram in the statistical plots menu, the first thing you need to do is you probably should go to your y equals Make sure you have no equations in there. And then you would hit second, y equals. Press enter to go into plot one. You wanna make sure that it is turned on. And then you will go over and select the histogram. You wanna make sure you're, since you put your values into list one, that your x list is on list one. Then you can hit zoom stat to make the window fit your graph better. To do this, you would hit the zoom button at the top. You would choose option nine, which is zoom stat, and you should get your graph. By pressing trace and using your left and right arrows, you can examine the classes. Now, if you don't like the size of your classes, you wanna customize them yourself, you can do this by going to window and adjusting your window. So the class sizes can be adjusted in there. You can press graph again, and then you can trace to examine the classes. Another tip for an AP exam, if you are asked to make a graph on a free response question, be sure to label and scale your axes. Unless your calculator shows labels and scaling, do not just transfer exactly what's on your calculator onto your paper. You need to make sure you label and scale everything. Here are some important things to consider when you are constructing histograms. Our eyes respond to the area of the bars in the histogram, so be sure to choose classes that are all the same width. The area is determined by the height of the class as long as they are fairly width. There is no one right choice of the classes in a histogram. Too few classes will give you a skyscraper effect with all the values in a few classes and very tall bars. 
to many will have a pancake effect, which will have a very flat graph. So neither choice will give good picture of the shape distribution. Five classes is a good minimum. We have several cautions based on common mistakes that students make when they're using histograms. So the first one is, don't confuse a histogram and a bar graph. Although histograms resemble bar graphs, their details and uses are very different. Remember, we're only going to use a histogram to display quantitative variables. The horizontal axis on a histogram is units of measurements for that variable. A bar graph, on the other hand, uses the display, used to display distributions of categorical variables or to compare the sizes of two quantities. The horizontal axis on a bar graph identifies the categories or the quantities that are being compared. When you draw a bar graph, we leave spaces between the bars to separate them. And when you draw a histogram, there are no spaces to show the equal width of the classes. So this graph on the left is a histogram. As you can tell, we have the class variable on the bottom. And on the right, we have a bar graph. Those are giving the categories or the categorical variables. We have several cautions based on common mistakes again. So the second one is don't use counts in a frequency table or percents in a relative frequency table as data. So if we look at the length of letters and the first 100 words in a journal entry, so we can see that there's only one word that has a length of one. There are 15 words that have a length of two, 25 words that have a length of three, seven words that have a length of four. So if we look, when they made this histogram, they accidentally put the values, the counts, on the bottom. So they had two values that went from zero up to three. So they had counts of one twice. They had three and five, which goes up to six. So two of them there. So on this, they were using the counts instead of the lengths. How they should have broke it up is if they wanted to go widths of two, they should do one to two. There were a total of 16. So from one to two, there should be a bar of a height of 16. From three to four, there should be a bar that has a height of 32. Another mistake is using percents instead of counts on the vertical axis when comparing distributions with different number of observations. Um, you need to make sure if the number of values in your data set are different, you need to make sure that you're using percents instead of the number count. Because if you're comparing the number of items and the original data sets themselves aren't the same size, then that's not going to be a fair comparison. But if you're comparing what percent of the first group compared to what percent of the second group, that will give you a better idea of what is happening. Another mis common mistake, just because a graph looks nice, it is not necessarily a meaningful display of data. So this graph just tells us the length of each child's name. So the first child who was surveyed has a name that is a length of seven. The second student that was surveyed has a name of length four. So the order in which the students were surveyed actually doesn't tell us anything about this data. So let's check our understanding. Many people believe that the distribution of IQ scores follows a bell curve, like the one shown in the margin. But this is really, but is this really how such scores are distributed? The IQ scores of 66 fifth grade students chosen at random from one school are shown below. So they have all these data values. We need to construct a histogram that displays the data. Now you could do this by hand or you can put all of these data values into your calculator. 
If you put them into your calculator and have it graph it, remember you need to adjust the size of your class so that it is something easy for you to represent. So if we have a class size of 10, so any value from 0 up to 80 up to 90, from 90 up to 100, and then we can read the graph. Remember to label, we're talking about the IQ scores down here, they labeled the axis with the values. And then we need to know over here that we're talking about the frequency. We're not talking about percent, this is frequency. So make sure you do label appropriately. Describe what you see. Is the distribution bell-shaped? So if we look at this distribution, it is roughly symmetric, or what we call bell-shaped. The median IQ appears to be between the 110 and 120. So it appears to be in this bar somewhere. And we know that the IQs vary from 80 all the way up to 150. And there do not appear to be any outliers. We need to draw a correct histogram to replace Billy's graph of the length data from caution to. So as I described when we were talking about those, the better way to do this is to break it up into if we do groups of two. So from one up to two, a length of one up to two, there are a total of 16 of those words. Words that have a length from three to four in total have a length of 32. And we can go on from there. Or you can break it down into individual words. So if we make this histogram, if we look from one to two, there is only one word. From two to three, there are 15 words. From three to four, there are 25 words. So again, you can make your class widths different. It does not make it wrong. You just have to decide which class width you want to go with. We need to draw a more meaningful graph for the first name length. So the first thing you do is identify how many you have. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six students who have a name length of four. So if we have a length of four, there are six of those students. We have one, two students who have a length of five. There are two students that have a name length of six and one, two, three, four students who have a name length of seven. So when creating that bar graph, or that histogram, sorry, we go from four to five. We are looking at the length of the student's name we would have the frequency over here, and we have frequencies of one, two, three, four, five, and six. So from four up to five, there are six students. From five to six, there are two. From six to seven, there are two. And from seven up to eight, there are four students. So this graph is much more meaningful. You can definitely tell more students have name length of four letters than any other length. So for the next two questions, we're going to use the following setting. About 1.6 million first year students enroll in college and universities each year. What do they plan to study? The graph displays data on the percent of first year students who plan to attend, plan to major in several, several discipline areas. Is this a bar graph or a histogram? Because we are breaking them into different categories, such as business, professional, arts and humanities, this is categorical data, which means this is a bar graph. Another way to tell is that our bars do not touch. 
Would it be correct to describe this distribution as right skewed, why or why not? We only describe the data's shape as skewed or symmetric when we're dealing with quantitative variables. Since this variable is not quantitative but categorical, you should not describe the distribution as right skewed.